You're listening to Northwoods Church Matters, a podcast of Northwoods Church in Evansville, Indiana, where we discuss why the local church matters and things that matter to the local church. I'm your host, Matt Higgins. On today's episode, we're going to have a Christmas edition of our Meet the Staff series. We're going to ask our staff questions about Christmas, such as, do you like a white Christmas? Or what is one present that you wanted for a child, but you never received? And what is your favorite Christmas song? And what is your least favorite? All this and more on today's episode of Northwoods Church Matters. Well, welcome back to the Northwoods Church Matters podcast. Uh, oddly enough, our highest rated or highest viewed podcast so far was the first Meet the Staff one that we did. Uh, I hope that was enjoyable for everyone out there. Uh, I'm not sure why that was the most highest rated. Maybe it's the deep, dark secrets that we revealed about ourselves. Uh, but we figured, hey, let's give you a Christmas treat and let's do it again for Christmas. So here we all are. We've got Bobby Pell, our lead pastor here. And uh, Darren Garden and Marvin Wilson, our associate pastors here, and we're gonna do some a round of Christmas questions. So, are you guys ready? See, si. see, si. okay. <laughs> Bobby's always speaking Spanish now. <laughs> one word, one word, one, one si. word. And... Si. It's it's an English letter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. One English letter. All right. So, first question is about snow and Christmas. Do you like white Christmas or no white Christmas? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I like it. You, you like white Christmas? Yeah, I don't we, don't. we don't give very many of them. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like if you could order one up, that'd be great. Yeah. Definitely white. Definitely white Christmas. See, I misunderstood the question, and I thought it was, do you like the show White Christmas? The movie White Christmas? <laughs> well, do you? I like really it? did. Yeah. <laughs> and I apologize for that. But that, that's okay. Uh, I do like White Christmas. That's one of my favorite ones. So the show. The show, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen it. For real? You haven't seen it? No. It's great. Danny Kay and Bing Crosby and it's, it's having the ha- ha- happiest Christmas of all. I love the humor of it. Boy girl, that. boy girl. <laughs> <laughs> the I, honor of servicemen and all that. It's great. I've never seen the movie White Christmas. Oh wow. For real. Yeah. Every year. Every year. Really? Yeah. Yeah, me too. This just took a turn. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen the Miracle on Whatever Street either. No, I've never seen that one. Thirty-four. Yeah, never seen that either. But in terms of snow, I'm a no snow guy because I'm always traveling at Christmas time, and so if if we get snow, that means things are difficult. So. I actually love driving in snow. Really? I do. I do. I like it. Okay. Cool. Found out something new today. Okay, so next question is, describe one present that you wanted for Christmas as a child, but you never received. Bobby. I can't think of anything that I wanted as a child that I never received. He got everything. I hope my sisters don't listen to this because they would be going, of course you got everything (laughs) you wanted as a child. You were spoiled rotten. I Honestly, I can't think of a single thing that I wanted. Wow. Derek? I wanted, uh, when I was about eight or nine years old, there were these race car, electric race car sets. They ran on little uh, metal things. I got them. Oh, Bobby got them. (laughs) (laughs) I'm resentful of you now. Uh, I'll let you play with them tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) That little trigger you squeeze to go faster or slower or whatever. And I I wanted that. And I made it clear in all my hints and everything. And uh, and so, I, you know, Christmas morning comes and I'm, I'm, ready for this to happen and it was uh at the time when raggedy ann was in popularity mm. and they had made a boy doll raggedy andy oh, no. and i got a raggedy andy instead of race cars and i was so disappointed <laughs> i mean I, I don't remember it but i can imagine the look on my face with it that was that was something the race cars were fun oh thanks a lot yeah. <laughs> maybe they just got mixed up indy car andy <laughs> maybe so mm. could be marvin uh, mine was uh, back in the 1980s, the first of the 80s, the last of the 70s, when CB radios were popular, uh, not just amongst, you know, adults and all that, but actually teens were getting into it and stuff, and they were having different handles, and you talk the CB jargon and all that. Uh, we went and looked at them forever and uh, but i never got one 
Oh, Christmas or any time. Yeah. Never got one. So no handle, no CB handle? No handle, no CB. Oh, the music now. If you had a CB handle, what would it be? I have no idea. <laughs> you didn't think about that as yeah. a kid? Maybe it's what Linda calls me all the time. <laughs> idiot. Idiot. <laughs> this is Idiot One on the, coming at you on the radio. <laughs> Ten four, good idiot. Yeah. I uh, I wanted... When I was a kid, the the cartoon Voltron was popular, oh. and I wanted Voltron, and I I wrote it down on my list. But there's a twist to the story that my brother wanted it too, and my brother got Voltron, and I did not, and so we were expected to to share Voltron. Dun, dun, dun. That did not happen. We did not share Voltron. So, you know, every once in a while I'll go to Secret Headquarters, like there's a our used toy shop in in town, and they have it there, and I'm like, I really should get that. And, and uh, no, I've I've never gotten it, but I've thought about it before. All right, next question. Uh, name something about Christmas that most people like, but you don't. Eggnog. Uh, that's that's a sin. I'm pretty sure that's in the Bible. I I hate eggnog. I'm not an eggnog person at all. And I think, you know, I I you know, eggnog only comes out this time of year. Yeah. I'm not an eggnog person at all so yeah that's blah. blah i don't know if we can be friends anymore that's that's crazy oh so you like it love eggnog it's that's one of the best things about christmas is eggnog so okay i'm controlling a lot of things are coming through my head right now so i just won't say it. i don't i don't have it with southern comfort that's where I was going. No, no. I mean, that's... No. That's where I was going. Straight up. That's where I was going. Out of the <laughs> Oh, okay. The egg duck straight up. No, oh. no, no. <laughs> exactly. Not the Southern Comfort straight up. <laughs> Welcome to our podcast. <laughs> yeah. We have now become... I'll uh, hush. Yeah, exactly. Darren. Uh, something that others like, I don't like. Um, spending time with in-laws. Uh, no, uh, candy canes. I'm not a big candy cane person. I don't like the mint, mint candy. That's mm-hmm. not I like wintergreen, but I'm not a big fan of mint candy. Yeah. Marv? Uh, peppermint, anything, you know, they always put peppermint just like they do pumpkin spice and Thanksgiving and all that. It's yeah, no, yeah. not for me. We are in peppermint season right now. It's I, know. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. Uh, my thing is Christmas caroling. I, I hate Christmas caroling. Like, it's it's the most socially awkward thing ever. You just randomly go to some person's house and knock on their door and like, could you listen to us sing poorly for a while? And they're expected just to, to listen to it. It's it's an imposition, and then I just feel weird doing it. So maybe that's the introvert in me. I love Christmas caroling. Really? I wow. Do. We're, we're polar opposites on this one. Wow, I'm founding that out. Uh. This this is kind of a rigged question, but I, I figured I I pull this out here. What is your opinion on Hallmark holiday movies? Oh. Which one? What, uh, what do you have a favorite one? Oh baby, I love all Hallmark holiday movies. I love them all. They are awesome. <laughs> no, come on, I do. For I do. The guy gets the girl at an hour and fifty eight minutes into the movie. <laughs> You know, you can sort of put it together, you know, they're going to be going to a candy factory or they're going to be going to, you know, so there, there's all kinds of wonderful Hallmark movies out there. So, yes. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the Hallmark movies, but only because I have some history there. I had someone living in my my home for a while that watched them around the clock your wife no it wasn't my wife no and it was uh, fletcher uh no it wasn't fletcher (laughs) wasn't any so won't say who it was but uh it to me i was just became very predictable and sappy and all that and and uh i i was i don't know yeah mark on my bag I love my wife, so I love Hallmark. <laughs> that is the politically correct answer. Well done, my friend. Yep. Well done. I don't mind them either. I think they're they're cute, and I I don't mind watching them either. So my wife doesn't. So maybe we're a weird opposite family. I don't know. All right. So next question: What is the toughest person in your family to buy a present for? I don't. 
I, there's not many people that I have to buy a present for. Uh, so it's Amy. Yeah. But it's only because there's not that many that I have to buy a present for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mine would be Stacy. She grew up in a place where her family liked other holidays more than Christmas. And so they didn't really do Christmas unless it was like the last minute. So she sort of grew up going out and buying for herself before anybody else. So you kind of got to beat her to the punch and, and buy before she buys it for herself. So, um, it would be either Linda because I don't do the shopping. And, uh, I said something about that last night to her as I was going over these questions. She goes, yeah, you don't do the shopping. <laughs> and, uh, I think there was only one year she brought to my mind that I did the shopping. And that was because she was on bed rest with McKenzie and, uh, before McKenzie was born. And, uh, but I'm I am told over and over that I'm the hardest one in the family to buy for. But if it's me buying for, it'd have to be Linda. Mine is my daughter right now, who's transitioned from uh, into a teenager in the teenage years now, and so she's gone from that phase where you, know, you get a list from your kids of, of like a hundred things that they want to one really expensive thing that they want. And so this year it was like, I really want an iPhone 11. <laughs> no. And so we had to compromise and, and come down from there. And hopefully this is an event vision of my future. That will be for Christmas 19, 20, 21, <laughs> 22, and 23. Yeah. 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 She, she had studied it, though. She said, Dad, it's only $30 a month. And I said, okay, for three years? That, that adds up a little bit. Uh, share one vivid Christmas memory, either good or bad. Um, a few years, you know, I, I've had a lot of bad Christmas memories, uh, not to be a downer, but I mean, I, I had, um, a few years ago, Amy's dad was, it was, it was his last Christmas. We didn't know if he'd even be there. Uh, it was on the night before we celebrated. And I was in bed uh, at her sister's home upstairs. They had a, a bedroom with a couple of beds. The boys were in a bed. Amy and I were in a bed. I had a pain. I got up, went to the bathroom, and the pain got worse and worse and worse. And I went and got Amy, and I said, we're going to the hospital. And uh, I told her, I said, you need while traveling there, I said, you need to break speed limits and get there fast. I didn't know what was going on. And when we got there, found out I'd had a kid and was having my first kidney stone. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, they gave me tons of pain meds. And then had you asked for that for Christmas? No, <laughs> oh. no, no. I like some opioids for Christmas. No. The next day we saw, we had, we did have Christmas with her father and then came drove back to Evansville and they admitted immediately admitted me into the hospital. Um, so it was, that was just a, a bad Christmas. Uh, that whole process was so, but it's vivid. Yeah. Yeah. Mine, mine would be whenever I was probably eight or nine years old, we took one year and our family went skiing in Colorado. It was before skiing was as big as it is now. We were skiing in Telluride, Colorado, and we had a motor home that we were staying in at one of my relatives' houses. And I remember being very concerned that how was uh, our big tradition was stockings and Santa would fill stockings on Christmas Eve. And I was thinking, how is Santa ever going to find us in this motor home? And, uh, w you know, we had went to bed concerned with that. And I remember getting up in the morning and uh, we had these big wool socks that we had for skiing and uh, reaching under my pillow on Christmas morning. And my socks had been filled with stocking things, even though we didn't have a chimney or anything. And I remember being amazed that Santa could find us even out in this motor home in the middle of Colorado. And that was, you know, it was just like, Santa is great. He can find us anywhere. <laughs> this was last year, right? Yeah. <laughs> the power of Santa. The power of Santa. <laughs> Mine's a little lighter on on the but uh, than uh, kidney stone. But um, whenever I was uh, younger, I wanted a basketball 
for Christmas. And I had several other presents under the tree. And uh, basketballs, I don't know how they're wrapped now but or packaged, but it was packaged in an uh, octagon box. And so I thought it was what that was, but I wasn't for sure. And so when mom wasn't looking or anything, I carefully undid the tape and looked at the top of the box and it was a basketball and I put it back and and taped it back and was pretty proud of myself that I didn't rip anything and I, I was good and I was happy and I went on. And so came home from school and she asked me, she goes, did you get into some of the presents? And I'm thinking, how in the world did you know I was so good? And uh, I said, yeah, I just wanted to know if it was. And so I remember my mom unwrapping my basketball in front of me and taking me at that point, at that time, taking me in the car back to the store and she returned it. Oh, no. And I didn't get a basketball for Christmas. And to today, when, well, the girls, whenever they, they were still living in the house and stuff, they'd come in the front door or the back door after Christmas shopping, and I'd be sitting there, and they'd say, Dad, you need to go somewhere else because we have, you know, your gifts. And we're gonna, I said, just bring them on in. I won't look. And I would be just watching TV or doing something, and I didn't have any inkling of what I got for Christmas because – I wasn't going to look. That one thing about the basketball broke me. Wow. Linda could put my gift under my side of the bed, under the bed, and I won't look. Huh. Wow. That's some self-control I'm scarred. right there. That's, I'm scarred for life. That's just good parenting. I'm going to you a basketball. I feel yeah. so you need a basketball, Marvin. <laughs> I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As I pat my stomach. Yeah. I have lots of vivid Christmas memories. I mean, the oldest Christmas memory I remember is uh, my grandmother was living in a nursing home and the pipes froze in the nursing home. And while grandma was at our house, she got a call from the nursing home that her apartment had flooded because the pipes burst. And then we, my, I remember my dad and my uncle had to spend most of the day kind of salvaging things and taking care of that situation. Uh, but then growing up, there were also memories of we had family in South Carolina and then we had family in Virginia and all that family coming together. And there was a merging of menus where in South Carolina, they ate barbecue for Christmas and and we would had turkey. And so we had both barbecue and turkey. And that was as a teenage boy that was like double meat. Yes, please. Um, then as an adult, when you have kids, I mean, there's great memories of. You know, I always used to enjoy putting together Legos with Gwen because that was an activity that we could do together. And it, it's like Christmas continued on because we enjoyed doing that together. And that was the best. And so now I kind of regret that now in the teenage years, there's not that thing where we open presents together or build presents together. And it's a different phase. You could text one. back and forth on the iPhone. <laughs> right. The yeah. iPhone 11. We could do TikToks together on the yeah. iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What is the most important lesson that God has taught you about Christmas? I think, you know, it certainly for me is, you know, this would be a traditional lesson that most people have experienced. I, I remember the day that everything was about stuff. And now, I, um, I look forward to being with Amy Garrett and Ryan and, uh, you know, it, I don't, it doesn't matter if I get a present, it, mm -hmm. it matters being with family. Yeah. And, uh, th there, there is a transition. I don't know at what point in time things transition, but things transition that, um, that it's not about, it's not about the gift it's about the people around you yeah i would just i would just add to that it's not about the stuff but also you know my tendency is i'm kind of a tightwad and to spend the money on the experiences for me those are the things that last i mean we we've tried to do that for the last several years of say okay the people want 
whatever they want, but we're going to spend the money of, you know, uh, making the holiday about these experiences we have together of going to a movie together or going out together or getting the Christmas tree together. Those kinds of things for us become the sorts of things that are what really last in the memory. The stuff breaks and wears out and you forget, uh, you know, about those things, but, you know, make, spend the money to enjoy those experiences together. Yeah. I'll always remember going to a Christmas Eve service at my, uh, my parents' house and it was a Christmas Eve candlelight service. And the pastor talked about at the end of the service that the light from the candle represents Christ and he lights the world. He is the light that has come into the world. And at the end of the sermon, he always used to say at every candlelight service, now take this light and put it inside of you and take it wherever you go. And so I thought that was a, a great thought and something I think about every Christmas is that it's not just about this one day. We need to take the light that came into the world that is inside of us and take it to hard places. But I also think about that one Christmas, my, at the end of the service, when Pastor Frakes always used to say, take this light inside of you and take it with you, my brother turned to me and said, how am I supposed to stick this candle inside of me? <laughs> Did you help him? <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to show him how he could take that candle and eat it. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. If you, this is, this is helpful. This next question is going to be helpful for people helping pastors. Um, exactly. Um, if, if you were Santa Claus, what type of cookie would you want left out for Christmas Eve? Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. Okay, so if somebody came to you with a plate of chocolate cup cookies around Christmas time, are you saying I'm Santa? I- I'm saying Come that if people wanted to gift us. I'm I'm good. I'm good with chocolate chip, baby. Okay, that's where my heart's at. All right. Yeah, I mean, around this time of year, I I love the sugar cookies, the iced sugar cookies. That's great. But my my all time favorite is no bake cookies. Uh, love really? The no bake cookies. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Huh. No. Huh. Mine would be oatmeal chocolate chip. And that's not two cookies. That's together. <laughs> Oatmeal, chocolate chip, or snickerdoodles. Yeah, because raisins are just fake chocolate chips. Oh. Ugh. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. I like the little peanut butter cookies with like the Hershey's chocolate kiss that's in the middle and a squish down. Wow. Those are delicious. Those are wonderful. All of y'all are complicated. Yeah. And milk. No eggnog. Yeah. Yeah. Leave, leave the milk. I'm, no I'm, eggnog. Obviously, I'm pro-nog. Um all right, here we'll end with a controversial question. Uh, what Christmas song is your favorite and your least favorite? Well, so I'm, I'm in the room with three music people. Uh, uh, you know, what's the song about? I caught Mama kissing Santa, Santa Claus. Claus. That is it. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not a good one. <laughs> Probably, not a good Christmas. Probably not a good Christmas song. There, there's no kids in Santa Claus in your house on Christmas Eve. Oh no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But that's none of your business. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's that's out there. And then I would say, uh, for my favorite, uh, you know, I like Silent Night, and I like Oh Come All You Faithful. Yeah. 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 For the the uh, the favorite. Uh, I like all the classic stuff of Perry Como, Andy Williams, Bing Crosby, all of those kinds of stuff. So those for me are the good, probably most favorite of those is the Christmas song by Nat King Cole. I just like the arrangement and the way he sings it and stuff. Uh, least favorite. Uh, this was a toss up of a couple of things, but I'm going to go with the, uh, I have trouble with the song, but not for very good reasons. I like the song. It's called Merry Christmas, Darling by the Carpenters. But there's a grammatical error in the song that oh, no. is so troubling to me that it ruins the song for me. And uh, what she what she does in the song is she says, uh, um, I, I wish it's Merry Christmas, Darling. Happy New Year, too. I have so one Chris wild. on this Christmas Eve. I wish I were with you. And nobody says I were. 
We may say we were or we was. They don't even say that in Arkansas. <laughs> Not even in Arkansas. So I like the song, and of course I love Gary Carpenter, but I, it's so troubling to me that uh, you know I have trouble not screaming at the radio. How did no one catch this in the process of recording this song? You know, so and now thanks to this podcast, everyone else will too. Yes, congratulations, congratulations, our, pres- our Christmas you. present to you. Uh, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, baby. <laughs> Mine would actually be the Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. I like that song. And uh, I, one of my memories of uh, college is in a singing group, we were going on bass uh, to sing. Uh, and uh, this guy was doing it as a, uh, as a solo. And he just didn't switch verses. He switched phrases and everything. and I believe the, I believe one of his phrases was Yuletide turkeys. <laughs> and, but Yuletide he did, turkeys. I mean, this is, you don't have to state this, but apparently he didn't know the song real well. And our, our choral instructor, she asked before he went out, did he need to take a three by five card? No, no, I've got this. He didn't have it. And so, but it's still my favorite song when it's sung correctly. But uh, uh, least favorite, um, I just don't get into Christmas songs. And so, but, uh, so I really don't have a least favorite. My favorite would be uh, Joy to the World. I think that expresses the joy of Christ coming into the world well. Uh, just music and arrangement and and everything together flows really well with scripture. Uh, least favorite, uh, I I I have a hard time using the word hate, but I hate the Christmas shoes song by <laughs> by new song. Um, just the whole pulling intentionally at the heartstrings thing about. My mama's going to die and she needs some shoes. Please help me buy some shoes. Like, so apparently oh. you can not take them with you. <laughs> apparently you can take your shoes with you, according to that one. Girls love that song. Oh, oh, it's just bad. I also don't it's like... It's like a Hallmark movie. <laughs> it is. It's like a Hallmark movie in a song. It is a movie, yeah. but it's not Hallmark, but it is a movie. Is there a kiss in the last two minutes? <laughs> I always like to see that kiss because... I only have two more minutes. <laughs> Almost over. I also don't like the John Lennon song "War Is Over." The and, and you know it starts off with "So this is Christmas. What have you done?" Oh, I just want to say to John Lennon, "Never mind your own business. Who cares what I've done?" Uh, but we, we were actually talking about this question at our small group on Sunday, and my wife had an unexpected answer. She she said, "I hate. We wish you a merry Christmas." I was like, why do you hate that song? And she said, because Christmas time makes me think about my mom and she died. And um, it's been a while, but still Christmas for a lot of people brings back memories of this person and this relative's not here. And it's a hard time for many people. Um, And so while Christmas is a joyous time, um, it can be a a sad time as well for people. And so I'm thankful that my wife mentioned that and reminded us that for everybody, it's not an easy time. Um, so I'll, I'll actually throw this out to Bobby. What would you say to somebody that is having a hard time with losing somebody around Christmas time? And, and how would you encourage them? Yeah. I, I, I'm, first of all, I would say, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, you know, it's, you, you have all of these supposed positive things that are going on around in the culture. And yet, internally um you know you're dealing with the pain of life and um the the one the one thing in the midst of culture is to to recognize that christ is really where we do find our hope even in the midst of our own pain and if we can find in christmas that christmas is about christ um i I would just encourage us to, to to recognize during during this season to find our hope, find our rest, find our comfort, find our peace in Christ. And that that's that's really what this season's about. The season's about that God became flesh. Yeah. 
to be with us. And, and in the middle of our pain, what do we need the most? God became flesh to be with us. I need God. And, you know, Dana needs God. Yeah. You need God. We all do. And um, that's really what this season becomes about, not, not what we see uh, through commercials. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you all for joining us today for the podcast. I hope y'all uh, enjoyed it. And uh, if you like uh, listening to us sound like a bunch of idiots, then we'll do this again sometime. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks for joining us today on the Northwoods Church Podcast. If you'd like some more information on our ministry at Northwoods Church in Evansville, Indiana, please visit us online at www.northwoodschurch.org. Again, that's www.northwoodschurch.org. We'll see you next time.